Third of the stack, default router and software. Interested in trying something different and running on Intel? Maybe something other than OpenWRT? Well, if you're curious enough, you can explore a router operating system that's been around for decades and used in enterprise from the early days of corporate networks. What is it? It's FreeBSD, in particular, a modern flavor called OPN Sense. And in this video, we're going to install it. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Oris, and in this episode, we're installing OPN Sense onto a bare metal firewall appliance. First, let's have a quick conversation on BSD based firewalls and their history. OPN Sense, or OpenSense, is an open source firewall appliance operating system built on hardened BSD, which is built on FreeBSD. As you probably guessed it, hardened BSD is a pre configured version of FreeBSD with a secure configuration to start. OPN Sense was created in 2014 as a fork of PF Sense, which is a fork of Monowall, and was first released in January of 2015. It was forked for multiple reasons, including license changes of PF Sense and the acquisition of the project by NetGate, but also for improved security purposes, including focus on code quality. In any regard, they have a very similar functionality, and you can use this information to help you install PFSense if you choose that as your firewall OS. To learn more about the history, check out the links below or do your own search. In my opinion, OPN Sense does well as a secure firewall with an easy to use interface for granular controls of your network traffic, with an array of plugin options that make it capable of next generation firewall features, like application based policy routing, radius, and more. However, where OPN Sense falters is with limited wireless hardware support. OpenWRT, being Linux based, has an array of additional hardware that you can add, like Wi Fi cards or cellular modems. In addition, FreeBSD has only recently supported ARM processors, while Linux and OpenWRT has long had support for ARM. OPN Sense has yet to support ARM, but it is in development with alpha versions available to try out. So, yes, you can install OPN Sense on a Raspberry Pi but don't expect it to be without bugs or full performance. Now that we've gotten a quick lesson, let's take a look at what we need. For this video, I'm using a generic PC firewall appliance with an Intel CPU. This is from Raptor Firewalls on eBay, but any of these generic PC firewall appliances will do. We'll take a look under the hood of this PC soon. Other than that, you'll need IO cables like HDMI or VGA for video output, Ethernet for network connectivity, a 12 volt power supply, a keyboard, and a USB flash with OPN Sense to perform the install. So, what's this Raptor firewall packing? Taking a look at the outside and starting at the top, we have a complete metal chassis with fins that act as a heatsink. On the front, we have a 12 volt barrel plug port, four 1 gigabit Ethernet ports a disk operation LED, and a power status LED. On the sides, we have ventilation holes and holes for cellular or Wi-Fi antennas. On the bottom, we have more ventilation holes, four holes for use with visa mount, and four rubber feet. On the back, we have a reset button, two USB ports, one for 3.0 and the other for 2.0, one VGA port, one HDMI port, and a power button. Let's open it up and check out the inside. On this motherboard, we have an Intel Atom 3827 CPU with AES NI support that's visible from the other side, right about there. For the sake of saving thermal paste, I won't remove the motherboard from the heatsink that shows the CPU on the top of the motherboard. As you can see now, we're looking at the bottom of the motherboard. Next, we have 4 gigabytes of DDR3 Sodium RAM, which is capable of 8 gigabytes. Then we have 64 gigabytes of mSATA SSD in a mini PCIe slot capable of 256 gigabytes. Then we have a mini PCIe port for use with Wi-Fi 
or cellular modem with a SIM slot. An additional SATA 2 port for more storage, a SATA power port, a fan header, and an RTC battery. Let's put it back together and move on to our install of OPN Sense. First, I'll show you how to download OPN Sense. Visit opnsense.org forward slash download in your browser, where we will then choose the image we'd like to download. Leave AMD64 as our system architecture. For image type, we'll choose VGA. For mirror location, choose the location that is closest to you for the fastest download possible. Then click Download. Now that we have downloaded it, we can validate the checksum to make sure the download has not been altered in any way. First, let's go into a terminal. Then we'll go to our Downloads folder. First, we create a checksum file using the information at the bottom of the OPN Sense download page. The first part of the checksum file is the hash. Next, we place two spaces and then the name of the file. After this, we run the terminal command sha sum hyphen c hyphen a two fifty six checksum. We see an OK, which indicates to us the hash matches what OPN Sense provided, and we're OK to proceed with the file. With that, we'll move on to flashing our USB drive with this image using Balena Etcher. Choose the OPN Sense image, then select your flash drive, and then click Flash. Then put your administrator password so you can proceed. Once this is done, plug in the flash drive to the USB 3.0 port on the firewall appliance, plug in a keyboard, an HDMI display, and we're ready to run OPN Sense. Now plug in the power cable, and once you do, you'll have a few seconds to get into the BIOS menu. For me, I can do that by pressing the escape key. However, the keys to press will vary depending on your BIOS vendor in addition to its look and feel. Now that we're in the BIOS menu, use the arrow keys to navigate to save and exit, and under boot override, we'll select the UEFI USB flash disk and hit enter to boot. Now we simply wait until we are given control of the console and OPN Sense will then be running in a live mode. To continue the installation, you can use SSH using the private IP of 192.168.1.1 or type directly against the console. In this case, I'll use the console. Log in as installer for the user and OPN Sense for the password. This kicks off the guided install process. First, we get a terminal UI for the key map selection. We can continue with the default key map or choose your country layout and click enter to select and proceed. Next, I'll proceed with install UFS. But if you're interested in using a ZFS file system, you can proceed with the second option. I don't have personal experience with ZFS, but I know it's great for data storage. Feel free to do more research. In the next window, choose your disk. In this case, we see the SSD as the ADA0 device, and that's what we want to go with. Let's go with the recommended swap partition of 8 gigabytes. If not, change it to your liking. Then you get a confirmation message, since you'll be deleting all the data on the SSD. Hit yes, and the install will begin. Grab a drink and let the install roll. Next, let's change the root password before we exit and reboot. 
Simply type your new root password, hit enter, type it again to verify with one more enter to finish. Now we're ready to complete the install and reboot. Lastly, in my case, I needed to do one more thing. Upon boot, press space to stop the auto boot sequence and then press three to grab a grub terminal. In here, we'll type set kern.vty equals sc. Hit enter and then type boot and hit enter again. The reason for this is because the screen freezes during the boot process if this value is not changed. It's a known issue when booting from Intel graphics based builds, but is easily resolved. For more information, refer to the link in the description below. Now that we have booted, we want to make sure we can reboot successfully every single time. As it stands now, it will freeze up again upon reboot. To persist these changes, we'll want to do the following. First, log in as root using the password you set up upon install. Then press eight to get into a shell. Next, we need to create a file to save the setting we applied on boot. This file is loader.conf Dot local, and we'll create it under the boot directory using the VI editor. In here, we simply write the command exactly as the same as we did earlier and save it. We do not need to include the boot command in this file. Now that this is done, for good measure, reboot the system to make sure it works. As you can see, it booted successfully and we're back at the console prompt to log in. And that about covers it for this video of installing OPNSense. With OPNSense installed, we are now in a great position to do an initial configuration of our firewall using a guided web wizard. In addition to any customizations, make it the router that serves our home networking needs. We'll save that for another video. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. What excites you about OPN Sense, PF Sense, or other BSD-based firewall? Drop me a comment below so we can discuss it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.